Under the Olive Tree Knits How to Knit a Mini Christmas Stocking Before we get started, you may find it useful to download the free written copy of this pattern from undertheolivetreeknits.com. I'll also put a link in the video notes. So, let's get started. For this project, you will need 7 grams of white Aran weight yarn, 14 grams of red Aran weight yarn, a set of 4mm double pointed needles, a 4mm crochet hook or close size, and a tapestry needle. We will begin by casting on the cuff of the stocking. So, using the white yarn, make a slip knot. Place a slip knot onto one of the double pointed needles and then cast on 25 stitches onto that needle using a knitted cast on. Next, we are going to redistribute the 25 stitches over three double pointed needles, which I will now refer to as DPNs. So, take another DPN and slip 9 stitches purlwise onto that needle. Then take another DPN and transfer 8 stitches purlwise. You will end up with 8 stitches on DPNs 1 and 2 and 9 stitches on DPN 3. Arrange the DPNs in a triangle, making sure not to twist the cast on row. Take a fourth DPN and insert it into the first cast on stitch on DPN 1 to begin knitting in the round. We will be knitting the top of the cuff in seed stitch alternating between knit and purl stitches. So round one will be knit one, purl one across all three DPNs.
you will have an extra stitch at the end of DPN3 so just knit this last stitch Round 2 begins with a purl stitch so purl 1, knit 1 for all the stitches on the DPNs and when you get to the final stitch on the third DPN just purl that stitch Repeat rounds 1 and 2 3 more times and then work round 1 once more until you get to the last 2 stitches. Here we'll be making the hanging loop and this is where you'll need your crochet hook. So transfer the next stitch from DPN3 onto a crochet hook and chain 12 stitches. And this is done by wrapping the yarn around the crochet hook and pulling the yarn through. Next, take the crochet hook and insert it into the last stitch on DPN3. You now have two stitches on the crochet hook. Wrap the yarn around and pull a loop through both stitches. Transfer the stitch on the crochet hook to what is now DPN3. You will now have 24 stitches. The next section is to knit the top of the leg. So continuing with the white yarn, knit 8 rounds. Leaving a tail long enough to weave in, cut the white yarn. Join the red yarn and knit 15 rounds. When you join the red yarn at the start of the round, the initial join will be quite loose, but this will tighten up as you knit the next few rounds and we'll also go back at the end and tighten this up, so don't worry too much about that at this point.
you can now turn the cuff back on itself and pull the hanging loop through. Next up, we will be redistributing the stitches over the DP ends ready to knit the heel section of the stocking. So for DPN1, knit the first six stitches and then leave the last two stitches unworked. Turn the stocking and slip the remaining two stitches onto DPN2 without working them. Coming back to DPN1, we're now going to purl 12 stitches onto one needle and this will be 6 stitches from DPN1 and 6 stitches from DPN3. Leaving the last two stitches unworked, slip another four stitches purlwise from DPN2 without working them. You now have 12 stitches on DPN1 and 6 stitches on DPNs 2 and 3. To work the heel flap, we won't be working in the round, but back and forth with the 12 stitches that we've just separated onto DPN1. So for row 1, Slip the first stitch with the yarn held at the back and then knit to the end of the row. And for row two, Slip the first stitch with the yarn held at the front and then purl to the end of the row. Repeat these two rows three more times, so you'll work eight rows in total. Now we come on to turning the heel and here we'll be working some short rows for this section. So for row one, slip one stitch with the yarn held at the back, knit six stitches, then knit two together, and then knit one. Turn the work and slip the first stitch with the yarn held at the front. Purl three stitches, then purl two together, and then purl one.
turn the work and slip the first stitch with the yarn held at the back, knit 4 stitches, knit 2 together and then knit 1. Turn the work again and slip the first stitch with the yarn held at the front, purl 5 stitches, purl 2 together and then purl 1. You now have 8 stitches remaining on the DPN, so just knit these 8 stitches. Now we need to pick up the slip stitches from the heel flap to get back to working in the round. Using DPN1 that already has the 8 stitches on it, pick up and knit the 4 edge slip stitches. I like to pick up both strands of the slip stitch, but you can pick up one strand if you prefer. It doesn't really matter as long as you're consistent. When you get to the end of the slip stitches, just pick up one more stitch as this will prevent leaving any holes. Moving on to DPN2, knit the next 12 stitches all onto the same DPN. For DPN3, pick up and knit one stitch before the start of the slip stitches. Then pick up and knit the four edge slip stitches. Now knit a further 4 stitches from the heel on DPN1 onto DPN3. You will now have 30 stitches in total, 9 stitches on DPN1, 12 stitches on DPN2 and 9 stitches on DPN3. Next, we will be working the gusset and the next round will begin at the centre of the heel. For round one, knit all stitches. For round two, we're going to work some decreases to shape the foot of the stocking. So for DPN1, we're going to knit until the last three stitches, 
then knit two together and then knit one. DPN2, knit all stitches. For DPN3, we're going to knit the first stitch and then slip, slip and knit the next two stitches together and then knit the rest of the stitches. Repeat these two rounds twice more. You will end on 24 stitches, 6 stitches on DPNs 1 and 3 and 12 stitches on DPN 2. Knit 8 rounds for the length of the foot. To shape the toe, we're going to work some more decreases. So for DPN1, knit to the last three stitches, knit two together and then knit one. For DPN2, knit the first stitch, and then slip, slip, knit the next two stitches together, knit to the last three stitches, then knit two together and knit one.
and for DPN3, knit 1, slip slip knit and then knit to the end. For round two, just knit all of the stitches. Repeat rounds 1 and 2 once more and then repeat round 1. You will have 12 stitches remaining. Now we just need to close the toe of our stocking. So knit the next three stitches from DPN1 onto DPN3. You'll end up with six stitches over two DPNs. Cut the yarn, leaving a tail long enough to weave in and then thread this through a tapestry needle. Thread the needle and yarn through all of the stitches, dropping them off the DPNs as you go. Pull the yarn tightly to close. So now all of the hard work has been done, all that's left to do is just weave in the ends. Poke the tapestry needle through the top of the stocking through to the inside and then turn the stocking inside out. Pull the yarn tight and just secure with a knot. Finish up by weaving in any loose ends and also tightening the join from the start of the red yarn. You can just knot these two yarns together and then weave in the ends. You don't need to be too precious about the finishing as they are just going to be used for decorations. And there you have it, a mini Christmas stocking. I hope you've enjoyed making this project and don't forget to check out www.undertheolivetreenits.com for more patterns and yarns. Happy knitting!